Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Wendy Papazan. I'm Sarah Reynolds. I'm Seychelle Van Poole. And I'm Via Williams. Today, we are on part two of our top 10 productivity hacks. So last week, we went through hacks one through five, where we talked about, you know, five things that that all of us have kind of internalized and used. Some of us, some of were new to some of us, right? And some of them were we're, we're, every one of us contributed to this, right? So it's not like all of us necessarily are focusing on all 10 of them. So today we're going to go through, through six through 10. And, and I have to say that number six has been such a huge stress reliever in my life, you guys, because, uh, I read a book, a pivotal book. It's called getting things done by David Allen. It's a famous book. book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Such a good book. it's funny you should say that because I, I I wouldn't say I loved the book, Sarah. It, it's a tough book to read. It's not a page turner. It's not one of those books that like I loved reading, but I forced myself to read it. Are you and saying I you had trouble getting, getting, yeah. the getting the get book done? done faster? That's why I love it. It was the result of the book. Yeah. Maybe I should. No, one hundred percent. It's like a really hard workout. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love the results of it, but I hated the book. Well, and I think that's actually you know because I was trying to. Th- I was trying to think of what the word hack actually means. My my brain was just going in a weird direction. But mm. I think what we're what what hacks actually do is is it like trims away the dead wood, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that you can you can get get to to what you need to do and where you need to go faster. I know we think of mm-hmm. hacks as a as a shortcut, but really when you think about the word hack, it's really to hack hack the extraneous stuff so yeah. stuff away. Get rid right? of the dead weight so that yeah. you can be more pro- productive. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what kind that of the is. nature of productivity, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Shortcuts, really, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and getting rid of yeah. that. But yeah. well, so number six um, was probably one of the biggest uh, things I got from that book, Sarah. And I don't know if you want to add anything to this, but number six is getting rid of unfinished loops. And what that means is, is, is David Allen kind of talks about how you get stressed when you've got loops playing in your brain about all the things you have to do. So what you need to do is find a receptacle. And in my case, it's my iPhone notes. You need to find a receptacle that you can record and dump anything you have to do and then shelve them for a later time. So we talked about in in hacks one through five, you know, having weekly planning time is one of our hacks. Like you have to have a time every week. Mine's on Sundays, but you have to have a time every week. As long as you have a time that you can go back to this, what I call parking lot, where you can go back to this parking lot. This is one of the best hacks you'll ever do because what you'll find is by the act of just recording that unfinished loop, like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it leaves your brain and you can relax and move on. Well, I don't know if you've ever heard that Beck song, you know, Strange in- Invitation. Yeah. Yes. Where he says, loose ends tying a loop in the back of my mind. That always Perfect. goes through my head. It's just mm-hmm. all those little, little mm-hmm. things. Just well, well, I think, I think taking we under bandwidth. Es- yeah. I think we underestimate w- the power of brain space. Yes. And so yeah. when something is unfinished mm-hmm. and it's taking up mm-hmm. space in our brain and that impacts our productivity, yeah. right? Well, um, I don't know about you guys, but like my, the, when this takes up the most amount of space for me is between like three and four o'clock in the morning and it just loops and it loops and it loops. If I don't get it out, I just, mm-hmm. I will not be able to get back to sleep. And so yeah, well, I had, I had a CEO a long time ago tell me that he'll call and leave himself voicemails, which to me, I was like, well, if you're sleeping next to someone, that might be a little annoying. So <laughs> I, t- I have like a, just like a chat with myself, right? Where I'll wake up and text myself and then ring, go back ring, to sleep. Say yeah. Well, say and then I was calling. like, but what if you're like really tired and groggy? And he was like, yeah, sometimes they're kind of inaudible where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, a text what message, you man. I don't know. I, well, that was the, that was the reverse hack I gave him was yeah. maybe you should type it instead of like, I don't know, groggy tech, you know, voice messaging yourself. I send yeah. myself emails all the time. Yeah, yeah. And that because same kind of a the thing. Reminders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think especially as moms, you know, when we have to do a lot of all of the different things where we're yes. arranging play dates and we're worried about um, PTA getting homework yeah. in and, and, and that, it, it does actually affect your bandwidth, you know? Yeah. It's a lot. True. Well, yeah, for sure. And, I, and for me, so again, I do it on the iPhone notes. And here's, here's what I find. What I find is when I actually have time and, and some time built into my schedule, and I'm really... 
I go in in fits and starts. If we're if this is full disclosure, right? Like if this mm-hmm. is we're being hundred percent honest, this is how I work. I, I get to the point where my day is so stacked up, I'm a stressed out mess. Yes. And then I kind of have to say, oh wait, stop. Everybody come to a screeching halt. And then that next week I'll be really good about building in space again. And then the next week it's a little less. And then ne- it's kind of a little bit of a cycle with me, but I'm constantly working to improve that, right? So what I found is when I have that space sometimes, I'm not always productive. And when I'm not always productive, it's when I hadn't really, you know, adhered to the unfinished loop rule and I hadn't really stuck everything in a parking lot. But on those weeks where I'm really good at it, I am so productive because every task imaginable is now listed and I can just assign those tasks to my priorities. And by the way, I use that in my Sunday planning, like I mentioned earlier. It is one of the best hacks I've ever done because I can release it from my brain yep. and, and it doesn't cause stress. I think well, and you the, can do that in a really simple way. Like I do it on my four one one, where I just yeah. have an eighty yep. percent list. Smart. Oh, and, smart. same thing. Smart. You know, mm-hmm. you just you just put that eighty percent on there, What's and that? some of the eighty percent goes on other people's priorities. Right. Mm-hmm. I have a little thing where I'm like, this person and this person and this mm-hmm. person can take that. care of these eighty percent so things, mm-hmm. and some things just sit there. And they sit there mm-hmm. and they sit there and they sit there. And like, l- let me give you an example. Like I've always thought it'd be great to get a, a little wrapped truck with our logo yeah. on it. And so I actually did the research and somebody gave me the information for it. And I just have that on there. And I'm not mm-hmm. going to, you know, not certainly not going to do it now during the global pandemic, probably not going to buy a truck. Yeah. And some at some point, it'll make sense to do that. And I just won't lose that thought. Mm-hmm. I love good. that. Well, and it, but it, it keeps that reticular activator up, though. So yeah. when when the timing is right or the budget is right or the world mm-hmm. is right, um, it makes sense. And, and like for us, Nick has always wanted to have um, a, a lake house up in Michigan where he can go and spend time. And it, I mean, it's been on our vision board for probably five, six years now that that was something he eventually wanted to do. And it all of a sudden made sense for us to sell one of our rental properties. And what are we going to do with that profit? And, you know, can we 1031 exchange that, right? And it all of a sudden, you know, had been sitting on that 80% list of something we weren't doing today, but a someday down mm-hmm. the road would be great to have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it now all of a sudden makes sense to do. Yep. So it's the action of writing it down somewhere to get it off yeah. your brain and then move mm-hmm. on to the next thing. And that's, that's the key here. Yeah. And I yeah, that's say- right, Sarah. And it has to have a system hey, behind I had it my too, though. Up. She did. Oh, Wendy, Wendy raised her hand. Her finger was in the air. <laughs> My finger up. Hurricane. The hurricane jumped in. <laughs> um, and I would say it's also okay not to do all, all of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just give yeah. you permission to, you know, you can talk about the four D's, which is like do it, delegate it, mm-hmm. um, delay it. Or the fourth one fourth that one. we often forget is dump it. Yeah. yeah. You can just right. let some of those things go. You can mm-hmm. put it down and decide, you know what? I don't need to do that. Or you put mm-hmm. it on your delay list and just get it on your mind. So. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And and by the way, Wendy, on, on that, just to kind of um, uh, amplify that, you know, this unfinished loop list can be, yeah, 10 years in the future. It, it's mm-hmm. whatever comes into mind. The idea is to put it in writing and release that it and get it out of terrifying. your brain. <laughs> 10 years. Right. 10 year future 10 list. Year future list. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. It's important. Yeah, well, that, so number six is getting rid of unfinished loops. And, and the solution to that is, is to find some kind of a receptacle to parking lot those in, right? Whatever yeah. that looks like for you. So, you know, you can decide. Number seven, ladies, productivity does not mean busy. Ooh. Mm-hmm. No, it's a tough one. Yeah. It's not all prior- tasks going- are created equal. No. Yeah, I feel like back for- to the priority. For being yeah. like a female too, that we were just talking about like all the school stuff you have to do and all those things too, like that, I feel like those two forces of busy and productive fight with each other mm. all the time, For sure. all For the sure. time. And that's where like, I think leverage becomes a really big piece of that too. Um, and we have a whole, a whole episode around leverage, but you know, not all tasks are created equal. And so on the ones that aren't helping to find leverage to do some of those things is really important. And of course, everything comes back to our very first one, which was clarity. Yep. Yeah, because like this, this comes back to clarity. Yeah, mm-hmm. because exactly. you know everything. what what the focus should be and where the productivity should be, not just on doing, doing, doing. What is the end result you're wanting, and your time should be spent on that, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And then a lot of other things you can delegate. And I would say the the bigger your world gets, the bigger your business gets, the more thinking time and white space you need in your calendar. 
So Which true. is counterintuitive. That's Which really counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. 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 counterintuitive. It has been um, super hard for me. It's, it's really it's hard. hard, Sarah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really, really hard. hard for everybody. It's yeah. really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. For many hard. years, I, I built the sort of the foundation of our business. And now when you look at my calendar, a lot of what I'm doing is more vision right. things. And mm-hmm. I keep thinking my business is going to like go down because I'm not doing things. Yeah. Like Meaning like I don't mm-hmm. have a huge task list, but yet my business keeps growing when I'm focusing on those things. It's really confusing yeah. to me, but it's been, a diff- <laughs> it's been a difficult thing for me because yeah. I realized it does change as your business yeah. grows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially when we get a lot of like chemical satisfaction from yes, being a doer. the dopamine hits, you know, for sure. It's like, oh, we did it, we did it, yes. we did it, we did it, we did exactly. it, we did it, we did it, right. we did it. You know, it's a lot of rewards for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, so true. Yeah. And from a business perspective, I feel like, Wendy, um, that as CEOs and, you know, our, we need to really focus on being on the business, not in the business. And what yes. typically gets us busy is being in the business. Mm-hmm. So so it's easy to do. Uh, we feel needed. We feel wanted. We feel accomplished. We can you cross can, things off of our checklist. You can checklist. do it easily. Yeah. We can feel well, like we had a, a and productive we're be- day. And we're, most of the time, we're better at it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, sure. it's, that's the reason we've, we've achieved a yeah. certain level of mm-hmm. success is we've probably yeah. you can jump been in, in our just... business doing whatever mm-hmm. we're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. If I make, if I'm really good at making cupcakes, I'm going to get to a certain mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. being a cupcake maker. And mm-hmm. then at a certain point, I have to transition from that's making right. cupcakes to being a business owner and thinking right. like a CEO. Right. right? Mm-hmm. That's right. And sometimes it's just mindless to be the cupcake maker. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I think what Via said was huge in terms of like, we feel needed. Mm-hmm. And so then when a lot of times when we're not doing, doing like doing the things um, for me, whenever I've leveraged a neck, my next hire, I always go through like a two to three week, almost, it feels like almost like a depression of like not yeah. being needed of like, yeah. I was doing mm-hmm. all those things and now someone else is doing them. Mm-hmm. It's very strange, but it's like the key here is being productive, being productive does not mean always busy. That's right. That's key. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It means accomplishing the outcome you desired. And it ha- it's, it go- always goes back to clarity of priority, which we talked about in the first episode on mm-hmm. our first five hacks, right? Having clarity about what your priorities are enables you to be productive, right? And not necessarily busy. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about white space. And I know mm-hmm. uh, productivity hack number eight is really putting white space into your calendar, right? Into your day, every single day, which is meditate, pray, and have spiritual time and white space every single day. Don't overdo your schedule. Yeah. And it's like an that's, affirmation. that's a lot. Affirmation. Yeah, I was going to say that is a lot yeah. harder to yeah. do than it yeah. was to just say. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think yeah. also just to say, like, I deserve it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I deserve this. I'm okay with it. No. I actually, I, I experience a lot of guilt around that topic because I feel like I should be using the word do from before, right? I should be doing something with it. And and I find every time I have that space, and Via has actually been a great example for me personally over the last several weeks of watching her physically go from doing, 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 doing to pushing herself to put the white space back in her schedule and seeing mm-hmm. the level of peace you have achieved and the level of like just the calmness that has come back into your rhythm over the last several weeks has been really inspiring for me to watch because that that is something I personally um, struggle with on the guilt side of, of taking that time for myself mm-hmm. and, and yeah. not well, feeling bad about it. Thanks for saying that. And and here's what I want to share with all of you guys who are leaders, who may have employees, right? Or who are employees. Like I, I you know, I'm an, I'm an intrapreneur. I guess mm-hmm. I'm an intrapreneur of the bunch. What's really important is I want to go back to something you said about feeling guilty, Seychelle. And when you're on someone's payroll, it's mm-hmm. extra tricky because you yeah. feel like it's not my time, you know, it's, it's my company's time. And so as leaders, it's really important to, to coach your people into this. So my leader who, I report to Ben Kinney is he's the one, he is harder on me than I am on myself about this. You do not have enough breaks in your schedule. You are overscheduled. Cool Mm -hmm. it. You're Mm -hmm. not available to put out fires. You're not as available to the people. You're not as available to think about what we need to do. And so if it wasn't coming from him, it would be a lot harder for me. And I think that guilt would stop me. You know, and something that you guys have talked about on here a lot that actually I have to like say to myself physically is, right, if the plane is going down, what do they tell you to do first? They tell you to put your oxygen mask on first 
and then put your team or your family's oxygen mask on or your child's up max, uh, oxygen mask on second. And actually, you know what they, they tell you to do now? What's that? Just you have don't to do take anything. your mask off and then put the oxygen on. <laughs> oh. and then, no, I'm serious. <laughs> that is what, that's what I was on the plane. That's what they said. That's a lot of your actually mask. listen. Put your ox- you actually listened. Of course she does. Well, yeah, of course, when he's going to listen, she go, wants to know what's going to yeah, happen if the plane goes down. I don't well, well, speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of traveling, I think that this pandemic opened a lot of our eyes to. Yeah. We had white space a lot of times when we were traveling. Mm, that, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's travel, such a good point. Yeah, just, and, and so now that we aren't traveling like we mm-hmm. were. This yep. becomes even more critical to actually have it in your calendar mm-hmm. because if it's not right. in your calendar, it's not going to happen. It's not going to exist. And before it organically sort of happened when we were traveling, and we didn't realize that. I think all four of us yeah. uh, started seeing that. Like, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, like I don't have as much white space because I'm not on a plane anymore yeah. with no yeah. interruptions for yeah. four yeah. hours, right? At le- yeah. I mean, at least once or twice a month, every single one of us was on a plane. Yes. Um, yeah. Going to teach somewhere, you had a conference, hiring, so. mm-hmm. meeting, like masterminding, whatever it was. Like we at least once or twice a month, each of us was on a plane. And so, you know, you think about that, that's 10 to 12 hours or more yeah. of white mm-hmm. space that right. we, we don't have. That's so interesting. Like I, I, it's so funny. I'm just having a huge aha, which is I actually planned to travel once a month. Right. right? I was, I was right. very proactive about like, mm-hmm. I'm going to travel once a month. I do this, I do this for me. And yet I haven't really taken I don't have like a that full time. two mm-hmm. days blocked in my calendar for yeah. thinking time anymore. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I, psh, boop, yep. uh-huh. well, one of the things, Wendy, that I started, um, just a personal a personal story. I haven't shared this with a lot of people. Um, and now I'm about to share it with thousands. But I, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, about three and a half, four weeks ago, I um, went and uh, signed, I, I took a meditation class and I'm now meditating twice a day. And I do it 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes uh, in the early evening. And it has been uh, really hard. It's not supposed to be hard. They keep, I'm like the remedial student. I keep having to go back and get my meditations (laughs) checked. And um, I am struggling more than any of the other students that were in my class, by the way. But I'm still, I'm sticking with it. And, you know, I'm trying to, one of the hardest things to do has been to to make it a habit. Mm. It's not ingrained in my day. I'm really struggling fitting it in. But I've had to do that because we haven't had the travel. We haven't had the car time. Like we're not traveling in between appointments. Like Mm -hmm. all these little organic um, breaks that we had are no longer here. We can go from Zoom to Zoom to Zoom, which I've yes. been doing, yeah. and just you know curl in a fetal position on mm-hmm. the floor at the end of the yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah, we don't even yeah. have like driving to appointment to appointment. You would have fifteen minutes mm-hmm. to an hour, depending mm-hmm. on where you had to drive, just of that drive yeah. time too. And so, yeah. I know for me, like that was driving home from work to my house. I actually had a chill out alarm that would go off on my phone and remind me to like start like taper it down a notch there, Seychelle, with your chill out alarm. And I'd put on my music and like breathe because I didn't want to walk in in CEO mode into my house, you know, like, you know, that like Nick would be like, whoa, 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 leave. Bye. (laughs) Please leave. So I I have had to reinstitute my chill out alarm and like putting my phone away back again, like as a habit to reenter. Like you've got now. I think I'm going to. It's going to be great. But with singing instead of, instead of. Please walk into your house holding your mic (laughs) You are right now. Hello, family. I'm going to go meditate and pray. (laughs) By myself. Do not walk in. And I would just say one more thing before we hop into number nine, which is to really think about the way your body feels at the end of the day. Right. Yes. Ooh, yes. I think a lot of us don't really listen to Good. our bodies. And and I can so relate with you via going from Zoom to Zoom to Zoom to mm-hmm. Zoom. And then at the end of those days, I just feel it. Like I feel mm-hmm. it in my yeah. body and it doesn't right. feel good. You know, and you when not we're physically hurt at the end of our days. Yeah. You know? And and it's also like what what gives you energy in your life, right? And that's a lot about what we're talking about with that productivity of get it, getting energy, right? We get energy from travel. We get energy from white space. We get energy from those. And so if we're not replenishing that space to get that energy and that breathing and that meditation and that time back in our day, that that tenses us up in your back, you're sitting all day, you don't have a bouncy ball or a stand-up desk or a treadmill or something that's keeping your body fluid. And so what are the physicality things that you can do too? If you are on back-to-back Zooms all day with your work, what can you do to help create some movement and momentum for your body or your brain that allow you that space? 
Well, yeah. And before we get into number nine, um, one last one last thing. I I remember getting really tra- tripped up a lot over the years when someone would say spiritual time because that, mm-hmm. that automa- I thought, okay, I need to pray more. <laughs> I mean, that was like what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. You know, and really, what spiritual time is is, is reflection time. It's really yeah. self reflection time, and it's time with yourself, oneness. You know, time to time to just be in your own thoughts without any interruptions. Uh, the other thing that I hear bandied about is this white space term. So white space is just that. It's it's thinking time white space. What what I hear a lot of people talk about white space, they'll, they'll use it as a break. There's break space and then there's white space and they're mm-hmm. two different things. And so what Wendy talks about a lot, you know, thinking time is from Keith Cunningham, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it, you know, I don't know if it's from him, but I, I do like to distinguish there's white space slash thinking time and then there's breaks in your day. Yeah, Very different. Yeah. 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 Like you're allowed oh. to have, everyone's allowed to have a lunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You're well, you laugh, down but, but it's a valid, like, it's a valid permission seeking it's, thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Know? I mean, mm-hmm. I feel guilty having lunch sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Me too, Wendy. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. you mentioned Keith Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. And, and say something- you can't see it, but Seychelle just lifted the little <laughs> the applesauce pouch. What is it? Applesauce <laughs> pouch <laughs> that I just sucked, downed. Sucked down. Between You, Seychelle, are allowed to have lunch. I was like, you can eat another pouch. A little projection. A little projection. She's the one that laughed while she's with the spoon if you want to. Yeah. The one who laughs is eating out of a pouch (laughs) (laughs) I I think uh, you had mentioned Keith Cunningham via and uh, one of the things that stood out in The Road Less Stupid is when he's talking a lot about thinking Mm -hmm. time and it was it really like stuck with me and he said you know you can have all these coaches you can have consultants for your business at the end of the day you know your business, you know your life better than anyone. But a lot of times we don't have the thinking time. We don't have the white space. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times like coaches and stuff like that, which I have multiple coaches, so I'm Mm -hmm. so pro coaches. But now that I've read that book and I have more thinking time, I'm seeing my business progress in ways I didn't see before because I know where we need to go. But as long as I take the time to sit down and he says, just pen and paper, right? And just have thinking time, start writing down the thoughts that you have. It's been huge. Yeah. And it's like Mm -hmm. everything else. It's a habit, right? That you can put in your schedule. You can get better at, you can improve over time. And if you feel like you're too busy to have any white space in your life, then you need some leverage and that's probably Mm -hmm. systems or another person. That's good. Yep. Really good. So that leads us to number nine, ladies. Number nine. (laughs) Yeah. Number nine. Yes. Don't let procrastination get excessive. That's good. I was laughing because we kind of procrastinated saying it. Yeah, <laughs> There's a little pause there. <laughs> that was intentional. I know. Well, I mean, this is a natural human behavior. So let's give mm-hmm. everybody grace, right? First of all, every single person listening, including us, procrastinates. It's just part of it. So stop flogging yourself about it. But we just don't want it to get too excessive. Mm-hmm. Have you guys read the book Procrastination Cure by uh, Damon? I don't know how to pronounce it. I have not. No. Damon Z. It's good. I actually yeah, don't struggle Z. with this very much. Mm-mm. You don't? Tell us. I don't well, either. Tell us, yeah. sensei. Tell us, sensei, Sarah and I. Why is it Sarah and I are always the problem? No, By the way, I, Sarah, you and I, I don't, literally I don't are not even allowed either. to hold talk on, about it. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Oprah. Hold on. I will stand with you about the dishwasher. I will not stand with you about procrastination. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it's a... It's a, it's a, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs are a lot of CEOs have some kind of form of ADHD and it is, mm-hmm. it's something about having ADHD. And I know that you're not officially diagnosed via, but for those of you out there who we do are have unofficially ADHD, diagnosing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a daughter who's got a pretty severe right. ADHD and she really struggles with getting started. She can get into mm-hmm. the flow, That's right. um, but like that get up That's and right. go, but, um, you know, but honestly, I don't, if I need to do something, I do it. Yep. This has been hard for me as a leader though. When Mm -hmm. you're like that naturally and you expect everyone else to be like that Mm -hmm. naturally. And sometimes you lack grace Mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to like catch myself, like it doesn't come as natural for other people. And how can I help coach them along when it's so natural to us? I think it depends on the role too, because I think there are, like we were talking about earlier, there are thinkers and doers Right in the last last productivity episode, Via kind of talked about how it's easier for doers to become thinkers or to learn how to think, but it's harder for thinkers to become mm-hmm. doers. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's where in our organization sometimes you need a little bit of both in there. Um, mm-hmm. 
and and that's okay as long as you're aware of of where you need to lean in or where maybe when your strengths are overused if you're an extreme thinker right and you're really good about diving deep into to thinking space and strategy or um, implementation you know as long as you understand that that's where you are and you might have a little bit of more trouble doing then you can plan it out and find coping mechanisms around that um, but I I do think that that's that's a self awareness piece too. Yeah. Well, yeah. And procrastination really boils down to, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, um, clarity of priority. So mm-hmm. probably the reason that a lot of us uh, don't think we struggle too much with it is because we are so driven by a priority and purpose-driven life mm. that we just understand that you have to do hard things. You know, there's another book, The Hard Thing About Doing Hard Things. There are The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Can't remember the exact <laughs> title of that. Anyway, um, a couple hacks. We though. could let's really go mess through. that up. So yeah. let's well, I could really mess that up. So let's <laughs> Let's just be careful. <laughs> um, even Vopra messes things up. Uh, so um, a couple hacks. I do want to go through a couple of procrastination hacks because a lot of people listening do struggle with this. And and I know you guys uh, have a lot of self-awareness around it. And I, I I just think we all actually do have some things that we procrastinate oh, on. Oh, for because, sure. Yeah, sure. But I, but I would also argue that um, a lot of people think they, think they have to get all the things done all the time. And that's mm-hmm. really goes back to mm-hmm. the, the hack about priorities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? right. Like there are some things I don't do, that's so good but it's a you, choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. absolutely a choice for me. It's that's that so what do you totally need to say no that. to so you can say mm-hmm. yes to mm-hmm. other things? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things I procrastinate on a lot is content writing. So I just have a lot of content I have to come up with, you know, during my weeks. I have to do content for webinars, for digital marketing, for uh, for the podcast, and I and I put it off because of a variety of reasons, right? Because it doesn't it doesn't always feel like I'm. I just want to charge forward and, and visibly move needles forward, and sometimes mm-hmm. content writing. Um, makes me feel like I'm coming to a screeching halt on that a little bit. So some of the hacks that I've used on that, that I got really from uh, the procrastination cure is the first 10 minute theory. So it's just, I I play a little Jedi mind trick with myself and I say, all right, I'm just going to start the first 10 minutes of this, right? I'm just going to start the first 10 minutes because what inevitably happens, ladies, not that bad, right? Once you, once you get started, you're like, well, I'll just finish it. So if you just kind of tell yourself that, then, um, then it really helps. Another hack to like, you know, double, double up on that is to give yourself a super tight timeline, almost like a race with yourself. Like, okay, and your market's like, go, I'm going to do this in 20 mm-hmm. minutes or whatever. So, you know, you kind of gamify it a little bit. Um, bribing yourself always works, rewarding yourself. <laughs> like yeah. I, you know, I'm not going to go get that coffee until I do this or, you know, whatever it is you want to you want to say about that. And then the last one that I love from this book that I talk about a lot is just, you know, eating the frog first, doing the hardest part of your day first and just getting it over with while you have the high, I think most people have the highest energy. Well, you know, I have to mention here because a lot of times when we talk about productivity, sometimes this doesn't come up and because we're talking about doing things, what I find people to procrastinate the most are hard, hard conversations with people. Mm. Yes, Sarah. Fierce so conversations true. that they point. need to That's have. That's a great point. Good point. And I, I've, I see this on my team. Like when we know a seller needs to do a price reduction, right? Yeah. So Our true. listing mm-hmm. agents will wait and wait because that's a hard conversation, mm-hmm. right? And the, I always talk about eat the frog. And a lot of times it comes down to conversations. Like what conversation are you not having that's that good. you need to have today? Because the reality is, is that if you can get that done, your mind space, you're going to feel better. And for me, it's like Love get that. it on... So the Mm -hmm. 10-minute principle for me, it's like get it on the calendar. Get the conversation scheduled and on the calendar Mm -hmm. because if it's it's on the calendar, the other person's coming, they're expecting a conversation, and then you're going to do it. I think that that's one key. People procrastinate doing things, but the biggest thing I see people procrastinate is so good. having that fierce is conversations. Such a yeah. great point. And yeah. you just yeah. said and it. I That's would, what I was going to mention is the book by Susan Scott, right? Fierce Conversations and her follow-up mm-hmm. to that fierce leadership. If that is something you just found yourself get a pit in your stomach about even just talking about having a hard conversation with someone, those are two books you need to go buy and read immediately, which is Fierce Conversations and Fierce Leadership by Susan Scott. They are life-changing. Yeah. yeah. And that's a leadership journey too. It is, you know, it is. Yeah, for sure. It is. But even okay, it's, so he, it's, I mean, with clients serving clients, right? Mm-hmm. Which it is, we're leading yeah. them. That is leading every, them. Right? Every yeah. part of business includes conversations that you probably don't want to have to have that yes. you need to. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, so I want to move into number 10. And what I want to say about number 10 10 is that Sarah and I, like, we literally have to put muzzles on ourselves. We're not even allowed to contribute to number 10 (laughs) because we are failing, my friend. We are failing at number 10. So Wendy and Seychelle have to talk about number 10. And we're we're just going to pretend. We're just going to pretend. (laughs) <laughs> well, so I'll jump right. in yeah. and because Wendy just took a drink. So I'll yeah. start, Sorry. which is, no, 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 that was perfect. I'm like, I'm okay, that's my, my segue. <laughs> yeah, she's getting ready. She's warming up the pipes for it. Um, oh. so, <laughs> so here's the deal is we all have the same amount of time. And I think when you have clarity around your time off, it forces you to be more productive with your time on. And so if you push yourself to understand, number one, clarity around what you want to do, and number two, what you're going to do with your time off, you're so excited about where you're going to go or who you're going to be with or what your reward is going to be that your energy and pressure that you put on to the productivity that you have and the hours that you have, I think can be one and a half X, two X what you would get if you just have unlimited hours and unlimited time and no no clear like hard stop as to when you're going to get out. And a great example is we're leaving town in a week and a half to go up to the lake house that we're going to buy. And I don't know how long we're going to be up there right now. We might be up there a month, two, three months. We're not sure. So the pressure that I am putting on myself between now and the 10 days before we're leaving is like massively extreme, right? I mean, the amount of hires we're making, the growth that we have, the changes we're making in our business, the implementation, because I don't want those things to be waiting on me when I get back. And if we could treat everything like that, where we have both work and reward, it makes it that much more impactful because we're going to feel like we deserve the time off too. Yeah. So just to reiterate, since you kind of missed the hack, but you explained it very well without saying <laughs> <Yes>. it. <laughs> oh, um, I, thought, I thought Mia said it. Well, there we go. No. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, we guys. Oh, you weren't allowed to say it. Oh, to say it. To I just went straight it. into it. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, yes. guys. Okay. So now everyone, okay. Everyone well, can just, we just guess cheated. what it is. No, just kidding. Get, guess what <laughs> so the, the and hack Sarah is, and I are not allowed to say it. <laughs> uh, it's to work less than your probably currently working and no more than 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yes, you heard that right. Working more is actually (laughs) counterintuitive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Seychelle explained it so, so well. And I would say for me, like I, I love, I love working. You know, mm-hmm. I, I do too. Yeah. yeah. It's I, not I like get I, a lot of, I don't I wake a lot up every morning from upset. it. And I, yeah. and I probably at the end of the day work more than 40 hours a week. If you I'm do. really I honest. Yeah, I'm sure. And however, you know, I know intellectually that one of my big goals is to live, to be, you know, to live as long as I can. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one of my, that's one of my big overarching goals is to live as long as I can. And I also know that lots and lots of people um, die from heart attacks, Mm -hmm. um, from not treating their bodies right, from not exercising, from obesity. And, um, And so, you know, if we're not taking care of our bodies, right, and all we're doing is working, then guess what? I don't get, I don't even get to work as long. Mm hmm. Right. Well, and, so, and that yeah. was like, that was a huge lesson for me that I was gifted early on. I think that's why I'm so passionate about this one is because my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's when he turned 50, like the yeah. month he turned 50 and he had a he had 50% of his business went away that month. He had a major stress event with that happening where he had worked this whole time and worked, 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 worked. And 50% of his business went away. I think, I think stress absolutely helped yeah. induce that medical event happening. There's no question in my mind. And I I looked at that very clearly as a 17-year-old and said, do I want to work to live or do I want to live to work? And it was a very decisive gift that I was given because of his pain and stress. And so I, and I don't are, want well, I don't want anyone else to have to yeah experience yeah and those that. of you that are listening in your 30s you know um, you can push your body yeah your body will 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 allow you to literally work it to death yeah your body will allow you that grace in your 20s and 30s mm-hmm. you know, your body will allow you to do that and then when you hit your 40s especially I don't know about men I can only speak from my perspective but when you're in your 40s your body starts to starts to yell at you That's right. it really does yeah so okay i'm gonna talk i i know i said <laughs> <laughs> hi Via. i know what i said hi, Via. <laughs> welcome <Sarah>. back <laughs> this is for sarah and i and maybe some of you listening 
Here's what I know. I think this is the best hack I know for us, Sarah. And I've, I've been working on it personally for a while and it's worked. And that is, is that <laughs> if you give yourself like self-imposed deadlines, you're going to mm-hmm. actually be way more productive. So if you say to yourself, okay, these are my priorities for the day because we have clarity on our priorities. Remember going back to that one through five. So if we have a, a really clear sense of what we want to accomplish every day, week, month, quarter, year, and we give ourselves all of these deadlines, we will actually be more productive probably than we're being now working all the hours we're working. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's helped me with having babies, right? Because yeah, they impose impose their own deadlines. I've had three big deadlines (laughs) and I've gotten a lot done before and then I've taken time off. Right. Um, And so maybe I can speak if I balance out all those like Maternity leave. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, have like six kids. Yeah, well, I think Sarah's gonna have. It comes down to counterbalance a little bit too, right? Mm-hmm. It does. Exactly. I mean, a lot yeah. of this, and so like there are times where we're working a lot, but then there's also times you know play mm-hmm. hard, work hard type mm-hmm. mentality, and so I think that that's important that's right. too. Yeah. Well, and and the that's hack, the point the of the hack episode, is to right? schedule yes. yeah. schedule breaks. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and and right, like right. we talk about the 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 vision for the podcast is right. We want you to we want you to build a big yeah. business, right? But we yeah, really right. want you to build an even bigger life. And so yes. without having the clarity around what you're building this towards, you're just going to work, 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 work till you work yourself into the ground, and that's that is absolutely not our vision for you and those of you listening, right? Our vision is for you to understand why you are on this earth, what you're building towards and why, right? The fun that you get Mm -hmm. to have. And can I give one other hack on this that Wendy gave me that I love, Mm -hmm. which is um, at one of our retreats, she um, pulled up her phone and she had this little list that she had created, which was anytime she thought of something fun, or exciting, or neat, or a picture, or a place, she put down um, a note on her phone, and it's called her awesome list of awesome. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but it was amazing to me because she basically just started a running list, big or small. It could be, I want to do a hot air balloon ride at dawn, or I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, or I just want to sit with my feet in the sand in the water for two days, right? Whatever it is, I need a massage, whatever it is. And so whenever she then starts planning a trip, or planning time off, or planning a date night or something fun, there's already an awesome list of awesome that has been curated throughout the dawn of time, right? Since she's been keeping this list for her to go do. And so that for me, I literally... No, no, no. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Dawn of time reference. Wow. No, geez. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time. It's great. So your list is well, long is what I mean, silly goose. But I, I immediately, I immediately adopted I that it. because. I love it. All right, I, ladies. I it was great. <laughs> it's really great. And I'm hearing another parking lot uh-huh. and it all boils down to having a receptacle to record yes. things as they come to you, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so I do want to review everything because we went through a lot of hacks. We, over two episodes, we've, two episodes, we've gone through 10 productivity hacks that have really turned us into highly productive people with pretty amazing lives, right? So um, so packs one through five we covered in our part one, and that is number one, clarity is fundamental. Number two, live a life of priorities, not tasks. Number three, manage your energy, not time. Number four, focus on habits, not discipline. And number five, block time for planning weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually, Right. And then on this episode, we covered hacks six through 10. We did number six, get rid of unfinished loops. Number seven, productive does not necessarily mean busy, right? Number eight, we want to add meditation, prayer, spiritual time, and white space every single day, not just every week, every single day. Number nine, we don't want procrastination to get excessive. It's going to happen. I understand that. We all understand that. But there are some hacks that you can kind of eat that frog and get it done with. And lastly, <clears throat> which is hard for me to get out of my mouth, um, work less <laughs> than 40 hours a week. <laughs> it's hard to even say out loud. That's a good note. Like it's hard to even say. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. So we want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. And please join us next time in our journey together with Empire Building. If you like what you heard today, please hit subscribe and share this with a friend. And don't forget to hit those five stars. So thanks for listening, guys. Go lead a big business and an even bigger life. And remember you're an empire builder. Bye guys. guys.